Self-love is so much. It's more than just, you know, making yourself feel and look good from the outside. It is you know, something that you would have to create and you would have to work on from the inside out. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you are new, welcome. My name is Diane Laufer and this is my channel. So, disclaimer, if you're here cars racing by, motorcycles racing by, or my neighbors bonking. I cannot really do anything about it. I have been trying to film this video and pick out the time of the day where there is the least noise, but my neighbors won't work with me and the traffic is not really working with me. But other than that, I would love to have you with me today for this video. I am filming a video about self-love. If you have read the title, you would already know. That's why you probably clicked on the video. So today I wanted to continue with the series, you might say, um, of the videos I've been making about my personal in my personal life, the growing, the pains, uh, everything around that area. And I wanted to open up to the world about me, just being me and the things I've went through and things that have helped me during the years. So one big important part of growing and of becoming who I am today has been self-love. I have not experienced self-love for the majority part of um, my life. I've learned that I have to teach myself self-love. So this is actually what has taken me to the place that I am today. And this is what really has changed my life. I have had a few DMs coming in about the other videos and people wanting to know more about what has helped me um, to become the person that I am today and how I you know, surpass everything that has happened to me in my life. And the most important thing that really has helped me, it has been self-love. So that's why I'm making this video today, because I really want to share this part with you guys. It is super important. It really changed my world around. It changed my vision on myself and on the entire world. And it really just brought me a lot of peace. And yeah, it, it overall just helped me look at the world in a different way and look at myself in a different way and that has opened up so many doors for me and has really changed the way I walk through life um, on a daily basis. So I have my notebook right here again because I don't want to miss anything um, that I want to share with you guys. So let's hop on the, um, the main part of the video which is me giving you guys a few points that has helped me um, achieve self-love in my life. So I want to start off by saying that self-love didn't come by itself, like it really is a journey and I think it's going to be a lifelong journey because as a human being you will go through things and you will be challenged on a daily basis and that's okay. Um, that's just how life really is and how the world actually works. But what is going to help you on this journey is being grateful. So my Number one thing that helped me change the view and helped me gain self-love is being grateful. Like overall being grateful for just being alive as a person and just having what I have now. I have really put a lot of pressure on myself in the past few years on things that I wanted to you know, be and how I wanted to look like and, and where I wanted to be in my life and I put this immense pressure on myself and I wasn't looking at the now, I wasn't living in the now, I was living in what could have been, should have been, would have been if I would do or react or perform in another way that, that I have done. So learning to be grateful for the now and actually being grateful for the little things, like really 
acknowledging little things and being grateful for that has really changed my world around. So it is, I think it is okay to be wanting more for yourself. That's how you would like create a path to walk because you would want something more for yourself and you have a vision and you want to create it. So that's great. But just looking at the little things, the now, what do you have? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have food on the table? Uh, do you get to wake up every day and be healthy? And do you get to have your family around you? Do you get to just breathe fresh air? Do you get to be free as a person, as in you can stand and go wherever you like to? All those little things, they are very important. They are very special. And if you, I felt like, the turning point for me was when I learned that I was so grateful for all that I had right now, I saw that like life could only get better from here. Yeah, I, I just, it's a daily practice for me. I wake up, I talk to myself, I go through the things that I have and, and the love that I have around me, the love that I have within me and just getting to wake up every day again to try it all over again to be a good person all over again to challenge myself all over again to love the people around me uh, there that are so dear to me all over again that really is important to me and for that i'm super grateful i'm grateful to have a roof over my head i'm grateful for all the opportunities that I have had in my life and will have in the future. I am grateful to be a pretty healthy person because there were times that I wasn't. I could go on and on and on. I'm grateful for my child. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for everything. And because of me being grateful for what I already have right now, I know that it can only go up from here. If I'm already grateful for what I have, whatever comes extra, is a bonus and I can enjoy it as much as I enjoy the now. Point number two is loving self-talk. Now we can be ugly and nasty and mean and evil to ourselves. That is actually the easiest thing to do or was the easiest thing to do for me. Um, having so much negative self-talk and talking myself down, being really rude and and angry and nasty to myself that I was breaking my self-esteem I was breaking myself from the inside out and that was that was not the person that I would want to be for myself that was not the person that I would want to be to anybody else because to be very honest with you the things that I've said to myself and the things that I've done to myself I would never do that to another person I would never have the heart to be as mean and as evil like that to another person i would wouldn't dare i wouldn't dare to be that person to another human being so there's no point for me to be like that to myself i wouldn't i wouldn't be happy with myself if i did that to somebody else so why would i treat myself like that so i decided that slowly but surely i really had to learn um, how to be nice and having the loving self-talk to myself, but I learned that I, I, I had to change the way that I talked to myself, the way that I was, you know, treating myself. And it, that takes a lot of time and a lot of practice and it takes a lot of patience, but it is so possible. And when you realize that you want to you know, at the moment that you would want to say something nasty to yourself or be mean to yourself, I was pausing myself for a second and telling myself, like, would you tell this to another person in real life? Like, would you actually dare to say this to another person? And if the answer was no, I wouldn't say it to myself either. Then I would stop myself at that moment and say, okay, so we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to say this. We're not doing this. Not right now. This is not the moment. No. That's how I would talk to myself inside of my head. Like, I would really stop myself every time. And sometimes it was hard and I used to cry and, you know, it was heartbreaking. But it made me, in one way or another, it made me so much stronger. And having 
that power of controlling my mind and knowing that I have control. So that brings us immediately to point three, which is controlling your mind. There are a lot of things happening during the day, so your mind can swirl off to a lot of different places and that's normal and it's okay. But as soon as you find yourself um, swirling off to something that is negative, you can stop yourself. You can really stop yourself. And again, it takes a lot of practice. You should not indulge in every negative thing that your mind comes up with because it can find a million different things that are negative that it wants to indulge in. So if you train your mind in a way that whenever you feel like you're getting insecure, you're getting scared, if you're not in a situation that is like, a danger for your life, like life-threatening, a burning house or um, a car accident or whatever, you should not let fear, anxiousness and, and doubts take over your mind because it is not going to help you. It is doubt and fear or mostly fear would mostly be like um, a surviving mechanism. But what are you helping yourself survive of if it's not life endangering situation. You're just going off on, a, on something that your mind wants to warn you about and you're just like trying to protect yourself from something that hasn't happened yet or won't ever happen. You're trying to make the situation more negative than it is. Well, well if you just pause for a minute and know that, okay, my mind wants to tell me this. Do I really want to indulge in it? Is it something that is going to help me? Is it something that that is truthful, that is like real life, that isn't just an imagination or your mind just, you know, going off on a ramble page of how negative and how crazy and how scary and how anxious something can be? Then you would realize like, okay, mm -mm, this is not the moment, this is not a time, this is not necessary. What if it turns out great? And I tried to, you know, switch the flip, flip the switch. There you go. I try to flip the switch on trying to stop myself and going off on a negative Nancy ramble and flip it and talk to myself in a way that I ask myself, well, what if this does work, work out? And what if this doesn't turn out as negative? And how do I come up with a solution that won't make me as anxious or as angry or as depressed as I think I would feel? So I hope that makes sense a little bit, but that's how I have trained my mind these last years in trying to turn the negative talk into the positive talk and controlling my mind when it wants to go off on its negative rampage that I would stop it and say, no, it's not the time, you're not gonna help me. This is not a, not the time, not the place. It is not necessary. I'm not dealing with it right now. I'm not dealing with it right now. So yeah, that's that's been a really great turnaround for me as in feeling better because I won't like swirl around in this negative energy and this negative self-talk and this negative anxious crazy vibes that I would feel that negative hard heavy energy that I would carry around because I couldn't see I couldn't be an optimistic person about a situation so with that it immediately brings us to point four where you stop self-criticizing yourself so again like point two and point three um, we can be very mean and negative to ourselves in a way that we would never dare to be to another person and having that immensely self-criticism will take away your happiness so knowing when to stop and turning that around and being a good person to yourself actually having like affirmations that you live by and you speak out loud to yourself or even in your head to yourself on a daily basis it is like you pumping light and energy into yourself instead of like sitting like this in a dark place in a dark 
environment and feeling scared and anxious. So the affirmations, it won't like, you know, change your world around overnight, but it will definitely help. It's like really pushing light and life into your body and into your mind. Um, if you can imagine like a really bright sunbeam or light beam, that's what I feel like when I give myself affirmations of things that, you know, that make me feel happy. So telling myself that I'm worthy, telling myself that I'm beautiful, telling myself that I'm smart, that I'm capable of achieving my dreams, that I am a strong person, that I am a loving person, that I have a list, a really great list of affirmations that I would read to myself out loud or just read them like silently and tell myself, in my mind, all of these as affirmations, they will, they will really turn around how you feel from inside. So yeah, daily affirmations, stopping the self-criticism, loving yourself, you know, controlling your minds, that is what self-love is really all about. Right, we are moving on to point five, which is stop comparing yourself. Now, I have talked about this already in another video. I think the video before this one, I think. I might, it might be, I don't know. But comparing yourself to others is, is so unnecessary. Like, if you think about it for a minute, right? There is nobody who is exactly like you. There is nobody who is exactly like you, who feels exactly like you, who has been through everything exactly like you. So if there is nobody on this world, on this planet, that is exactly like you, why would we always try to compare ourselves to other people? Like, it, it doesn't make sense in my head, yet it is something that I have done and sometimes I still do. But it is so unnecessary. It really, really is unnecessary. Like, I will never be able to be another person. I will never be able to be whoever I can look at. I will never be her, him or her. So what point does it have for me to try to compare myself to his or her life? Like, her journey is her journey or his journey is his journey. It is not my journey and it's not my life path. So I, I'm not doing myself justice by comparing myself to somebody else when I really should be focusing on myself. You know, if somebody else got married at 25 and had a great career at 27 and has a beautiful family and kids at 30 and has built a house and I don't know what, drives the nicest car or whatever at age 30, that doesn't mean that that is my life path. That doesn't mean that my life should go exactly like that. I had to teach myself that my life path is my life path and I do not have to chase or race the life that anybody else is living. And that brought so much like peace and calmness in my heart and in my soul that eventually I could let go of all the pressure that I was putting on myself. Number six, I think, or seven. I don't know, I lost count, guys, but yeah. Next point would be listen to your body. Uh, I cannot explain to you guys how important it is to stop for a minute and listen to your body. Um, I'm a workaholic. Hi, hello. Um, if I could, I would work 24-7 if I had the energy and the mental capacity. I would work 24-7 until I am done or have achieved something that I would be crazy about at that specific point. But it is not realistic. So I had to learn to listen to my body, to give myself a little break when I would feel that my body needed the break. I had to really try to understand my body and calm my mind down, like be quiet in my mind, in my head for a minute and just be right here in and out with my body. Feeling 
and try to understand what it needs. Does it need rest? Does it need vitamins? Because I used to eat fast food all the time and I still am not the best person in my the way that I feed myself. But I had to learn that like because my mind could go on and on and on and work forever if I would have to, my body would not give me that chance. Like it would all of a sudden it would tell me like I've had just about enough of you and I'm shutting down and I would be sick for like weeks because I was not taking care of my body. I am still not the person that goes to the gym and works out like I should do. I'm still trying to pick that up and find a motivation and it's actually not really about you know getting fit and having the perfect body but it's just about the part that you try to move your body and give it a little bit of, of movement and you know love and I, I don't know I'm not the best person to talk about the movement part because I'm not doing it yet but I know that it is important and that it's necessary um, I just haven't gotten to that yet but with the other part of listening to my body and knowing when I am tired and not push it too far up to a point where I would totally exhaust myself um, and then be sick for a while yeah that that just that just is something that is very important you should really listen to your body um, you know if you feel like you need rest take your rest if you feel like you need vitamins and you're feel, not feeling like at your best you know eat some fruits and vegetables or take vitamin supplements if you have to, if you don't have the time, um, but you know, try to take care of your body as long, as best as you can, because your mind can go on for, for forever. But if your body is not going to work with you because you're not taking care of it, you would be stuck. So yeah, you have just that one body, and you need to take care of it. So make sure you do it as often as you can, as best as you can. Don't beat yourself up if you're not doing it. Just try to pitch in and come back to yourself whenever you need. Next point would be to put yourself first. I'm a people pleaser or I want no, what? Let's rewind that. I was a people pleaser. I'm not anymore. I've learned to put myself first. I've learned to listen to myself and, and be a great person for myself, which meant that I needed to cut off some people and I needed to let go of a few people that have been in my life that weren't serving me in the way that I would want to feel or in the way that I wanted to grow. And it is natural, it's normal, you know, no hard feelings. It wasn't any, it's not about, you know, letting people go and having drama. It's not about any of that. It is about putting yourself first, protecting your aura, acknowledging what you need, where you want to go, and knowing that you cannot take everybody with you. It is, it is not a fun Parts, uh, but it's necessary and you are not wrong for being selfish about your well-being and about your own space so knowing that and teaching myself that was uh, it was hard but it was freeing at the same time because I learned that when I let did let go of things that weren't serving me it would give me a lot of peace and less stress and it, it would make me feel better about myself and my mind wasn't consuming I wasn't drained like my energy wasn't as drained at, at, as it would be when I wasn't putting myself first so putting yourself first and regaining and re grasping that energy making it yours and you know putting your foot down uh, learning how to say no and knowing when to say yes when you really want to do something, allowing yourself to also, you know, have the fun that you would want to experience. And yeah, overall, just being, just being you, putting yourself first, knowing what you want to do and what you don't want to do. 
um, being vocal and honest about it, it is it, it's really gonna twist some things that wouldn't be as wouldn't be as visual all of the time, but you will definitely feel the difference when you start to put yourself first. And that brings us to the last point, which is giving yourself time. You guys, I cannot stress this enough. Self-love is not something that you will see and you will feel like this. It is a constant process. It is something that you will have to teach yourself and for each and everybody it is going to be a little different and with each and every stage and season in life it can be and mean something different but knowing that self-love is a journey and accepting that and giving yourself time letting loose of all the pressure just giving yourself time really listen to yourself Listen to your body, being kind to yourself, having affirmations for yourself, being grateful. Um, Self-love is so much. It's more than just, you know, making yourself feel and look good from the outside. It is uh, something that you would have to create and you would have to work on from the inside out. Knowing that and giving yourself time to develop that as a human being is I think the most important thing of all of this that I've already told you because it only comes with time. It will not happen in a day. Maybe it won't even happen in a year. But as long as you, you know, work towards having as much self-love as you can possibly have, then you will get there. Like, you would get there. You would work your way up and you would you would see that like self-love is like an endless thing you know it, it can never end it can only become more if you willingly and lovingly give yourself what you deserve all right so that was it for today i hope you enjoyed the video i hope this video made sense the topic of self-love is it is such a broad topic that I struggled a little bit with finding the exact points on how to tell you to develop self-love and how to help you understand where it started out for me and then how what it what it was that I focused on to regain my self-love so yeah i hope this was helpful in any way if you have ways that you give yourself self-love and you have developed self-love for yourself please leave them in the comments down below i would love to read them and even have a conversation because i am still learning and i am so open to you know receive all of the comments and you know learn from you guys also um, I hope this helped you out a little bit and you know help you on your journey of self-love because it truly is a journey and I want to thank you so so much for your time thank you for watching thank you for coming back to my channel and, and having interest in what I have to say it really does mean a lot to me if I can help you out in any way shape or form giving whatever advice you think I would be able to give you guys I'm not a professional I'm just telling you what I have learned until now I'm just sharing it because I feel like this might be helpful for somebody else um, on their journey all right thank you guys again so much for watching I appreciate your time I appreciate you coming back and, and watching I will see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you want to see from me next. I have a few things coming up, but I would love to hear from you. Know what you want to know from me next. All right. Thank you again. I'm sending you a lot of love, peace, and happiness. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. I'm not home. I want to know. Can we trust this? That's about to let us know. I'd grow.